To understand the theory of adult learning, it's important to understand what the theories of learning were before. For most of history, it was assumed that learners, both adults and children, were empty vessels into which you poured knowledge. Noel studied adults and how they learned, and concluded that they learned in quite different ways to how children were presumed to learn. And he used his studies to formulate five assumptions about adult learning. Firstly, that adults are independent and self-directing. Adults have experience, which is a valuable resource for learning. Adults value learning that is integrated with the needs of their everyday life. Adults prefer to learn around problems rather than in theoretical chunks of knowledge. Adults are motivated by largely internal drives rather than external targets. Knowles used the term andragogy, or how adults learn, to distinguish it from pedagogy, which was how children learned. Knowles' theory raises a number of questions. The first is, does it describe how people learn or how they should ideally learn? And is it true that children and adults learn in completely different ways? It's generally accepted now that a lot of adults do not learn in the way Knowles described. Uh, and most people active in education at the moment would say that this is perhaps an ideal. So people are more effective when they learn like adults. And perhaps our job is to encourage them to be more adult-like in their learning. Knowles himself acknowledged that there wasn't such a big difference between the learning of adults and children, and in many ways, children could be adult learners too. An example of this in practice might be uh, a family member of mine who was a young girl of five or six who was really struggling with maths at school. She just didn't understand it. And she couldn't see the point. And I was talking to her one day about maths and we decided that as a reward for having tried at maths, she could buy herself some sweets. And I held out my hand, full of a variety of change, and in no time, she picked out the right combination of coins to make 37 pence. For me, this is an example of how children also are more effective learners when they perceive the problem to be relevant to them. This issue has been studied across a variety of contexts and age groups, and most notably by Jean Lave, who came up with the theory of situated cognition. She studied people particularly doing mathematical tasks in a variety of contexts, both in the classroom and in their everyday lives, and discovered that they used very different strategies to solve problems in the classroom when it's presented in a theoretical way to how they solved it when they were doing their shopping or selling things to each other. And people were capable of quite sophisticated maths where they perceived it to be relevant to them. The implication for us as clinical teachers is that we need to be cautious about how we run educational sessions. If you subscribe to adult learning theory, it is unlikely that you will want to present theoretical knowledge detached from real problems. It's unlikely that you're going to want to uh, lecture people about a particular topic, present purely didactic information. And you are going to want to make the learning outcomes as relevant to the individual as you can. And I think the most obvious implication for clinical teachers is we learn from our patients. And so we build educational activities around our patient contacts. Adult learning theory can be seen as an aspiration for how you would ideally behave. And I think this gives you a different dimension if you're dealing with a problem learner. If you have a problem learner, it's unlikely you're going to want to try and pour more information into them. But you might wish instead to look at their motivation and their engagement with their work to see if you can make them learn more like an adult. I've been involved with a learner who was being very competent in many ways, always comes to me for the answers. And my concern was that when she was in the outside world, in independent practice, she wouldn't have developed the skills to uh, solve the problems that she will face in everyday practice. What I did was to encourage her 
to find out the answers to problems herself, to call consultants and specialist doctors with queries before she brought them to me, to discuss them with other members of the clinical team. In this way, she became a more adult learner. I felt that by motivating her to see the relevance of this in her life outside, that allowed her to make that step. And in effect, she was learning how to learn and learning about learning. So for me, what adult learning theory is telling us is that we shouldn't be trying to pour more and more knowledge into our learners, but rather concentrating on making learning relevant to their needs and enhancing their autonomy as self-directed learners. Here are some questions that are intended to get you thinking about this subject in greater depth. To what extent do you agree with the views presented in this programme? What critical comments would you make about these ideas? There's further discussion of adult learning in our e-learning module on facilitating learning in the workplace. Go to faculty.londondeanery.ac.uk forward slash e-learning and select the topic from the left-hand panel. If you're a student on our postgraduate certificate course, you'll find references and suggestions for additional reading within the online resource folder.